Hey guys, Chris the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. I am super excited today because we are getting an upgrade to the AI that is powering the excellent tool called Blur Exterminator, which I featured on the channel before. Blur Exterminator is a paid plugin for PixInsight, um, and PixInsight being what I consider to be the best astrophotography uh, software um, that is available to us. And Blur Exterminator just got better because it released uh, AI version 4 available to you if you've already bought the plugin or if you buy, buy it going forward, there's no additional cost. The current AI was version 2, and so a big jump to version 4. Uh, the author of Blur Exterminator, Russ, has not uh, being idle. This is awesome to see. Uh, so what are the big differences? How to install it? Let's do some comparisons. So let's get into it in this video. So uh, first, you want to install Blur Exterminator with AI v4. What you want to do is, if you've already installed Blur Exterminator, you will have Blur Exterminator available in the repositories. Uh, here for me, it is um, here. And uh, double check that it's the case. If not, you should add it as per the instructions on uh, Russ's website. And uh, once you have checked that, you want to go to updates and check for updates. This will check for updates and it will tell you that, okay, you have a uh, new update. It will prompt you to install them and then it will prompt you to restart PixInsight. Uh, if you've done it before, you're very used to that. Once it's restarted, the updates will be installed. I've already done it, so there's no updates on my side. Uh, and once you're done, there's one more thing to do to use Blur Exterminator with AI v4. It's to go into Blur Exterminator and click on Select AI. By default, you will see this screen. You will have Blur Exterminator, uh, Blur Exterminator version 2, AI version 2 and you have AI version 4 available, click to select as a nice message to let you know about this. So you can click on select AI and you have two files, version 2 is here, version 4 is here. And I'm gonna use version 4, here we go. We are now ready to use uh, AI version 4 of Blur Exterminator. Let's try it out on a few images. Are there any drawbacks? How large is the difference? Are there any cases where you'd want to go back to AI2? Uh, the advantage is you can definitely switch between AI v2 and AI v4 if you find any issues with AI v4. So that's great. You have reverse compatibility effectively. So how well does it perform? Let's look, I've prepared a series of images uh, from very old that I took years ago to fairly recent with various quality in terms of star shapes and signal to noise ratio. And let's start with the Christmas tree nebula or cone nebula because it's good for this season, obviously. And uh, this is the original image. And you can see it's a decent image of the cold nebula in H alpha. I don't remember which equipment I took it with. The stars in the corner are starting to have issues there. They're kind of elongated, etc. Uh, so it's not perfect, but it's there. Okay, how did uh, AI version 2 and AI version 4 of Blur Exterminator perform on this image? Let's first look at the cone nebula itself. So I'm going to look at the same field of view uh, between the two. And there's, as far as I can tell, an immediate difference in terms of the uh, contrast that I see on the cone itself. It's more distinct in the V4 uh, version, as well as like this little uh, inverted V here. It's definitely more distance in, uh, distinct in the V4 uh, version than in the V2 version. And if you look at those three stars next to it, they're far more visible in V4 than V2, which tended to kind of like eat up those uh, little stars. And uh, we can see various uh, areas where this is similar. I can see definitely in this area here, in the, the, the drapes here that are going on, more details and contrast in V4 compared to V2. So this is good. Let's have a look at the uh, one of the famous sections of this, which are like the wiggles here, right? Uh, so let's look at those regals in AI V2, AI V4. The difference here is actually fairly large. We can see that V2 has quite a few details here, but V4 has much more details. Uh, so this, by the way, it's uh, not magic, it is mathematics, and it's not AI trying to guess details. It is AI helping perform a mathematical operation called deconvolution. So as much as possible, Blur Exterminator, even with AI v4, is not trying to invent new details. It is eking out details that already exist in the image that you took. Uh, but yeah, here we can see that uh, definitely v4 has eked out more details and basically it helped the contrast 
uh, more than AIV2. And just to be clear, there is the same amount of detail between the two images. It's just that the image uh, on the right, the contrast between those details was enhanced more and better than in the original uh, AIV, uh, AIV2 image. So let's look at the corners here. And you can see the stars in the corner for AIV2 are actually very wrong. In the original images, all of those stars, they were extended stars, but here V2 misunderstood them as double stars. So this is actually really bad on the part of V2. Let's see how V4 behaved here. And V4 is perfect. It did not misunderstand those, uh, those stars as double stars and they're perfectly round, really, really nice. I mean, I want to compare to the original there because it's really impressive what we're seeing. Yeah, like original versus V4, absolutely amazing. Guys, this is absolutely amazing. Um, okay, excellent. So we can see a very large change on this not so great signal to noise ratio image that we had on the Christmas tree nebula. Let's look at another example. This is the heart nebula or the Melot nebula, the heart of the heart nebula effectively. And I took that recently with my IMX585 camera from Tech in high conversion gain mode. Uh, HDR has some issues these days together with my Newtonian uh, Quattro 150P telescope sitting on an AM5 mount. The data is good quality. Uh, their signal to noise ratio is pretty decent as well and the star shapes are good as well so there's not much effectively for uh, blur exterminator to enhance so let's see if even in those conditions we have a large difference between ai v2 and ai v4 uh, so for that i'm going to zoom into the uh, heart of the heart nebula right and let's look at the same area between ai v2 which is on the left and ai v4 that is on the right and in this particular case, honestly, I don't see such a large difference between the two. Um, I'd say like maybe it's slightly more contrasty in uh, the image on the right, so V4 compared to V2, uh, but I wouldn't like be able to tell the difference if I did like a blind test and I probably wouldn't be able to say like, oh, this is V2, this is V4. So there's not a huge difference and this is because the source data is already of decent quality. So there's uh, so V2 performed really well on it in the first place. Um, there is a, maybe a slight difference. Again, we can see that the faintest stars here, those, those uh, three stars here, as well as those three stars here, they're fainter on the V2 image compared to the V4 image. So there's small differences, but you really have to search for them. I would say they're indicative of V4 working better in general, rather than having a huge difference on this particular image. Uh, let's look at uh, maybe um, this nebulosity, or that one, let's look at this nebulosity here, see what we get uh, between V2 and V4. And yeah, again, it's very similar. Uh, maybe slightly more contrasty on the right. Uh, I, I honestly wouldn't be able to tell in a blind test. So uh, here I would say it's more or less of a draw, not a big difference between the two. Let's have a look at this corner here. And again, I feel like maybe when we look at this, V4 is slightly more contrasty. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't see much of a difference. So there you go. If you have good source data in the first place, V4 versus V2 is not gonna make a big difference. Let's look at something else. This is the Horsehead Nebula. I took that back in 2014, maybe 2015, I don't remember, but I believe this is the first time that I ever attempted this target. This was with a Canon DSLR camera, probably the T2, uh, together with a small refractor. Uh, that was a, a doublet, ED doublet uh, refractor. So we can see that we have not very good signal to noise ratio and uh, we have very oblong stars here in the top left uh, corner due to tilt probably in my uh, sensor. And the signal to noise ratio is pretty bad. So I'd, maybe that's another um, area where I wouldn't see such a big difference between the two. Let's open up the image. Let's start with, let's say, the Horsehead Nebula. Let's zoom in onto the Horsehead and look at V2 on the left compared to V4 on the right. And honestly, I don't see much of a difference except the star shapes. 
the star shapes in V2, they're elongated left to right. In V4, they're pretty much pinpoint exactly as stars should be. This is great in my opinion. Um, let's look at the flame nebula. And here we are with the same field of view. And here again, we can see the star shapes are better in V4 than they are in V2. And I would say there is slightly more contrast, especially in this area here, in V4 compared to V2, but that might be psychological. Uh, probably another thing I wouldn't be able to do a blind test on. So here, again, maybe very slight improvements in the nebulosity details in V4 compared to V2, but more than that, it's the star shapes that are better, which is very much appreciated. Let's look at the corner of the image. Come on, here. And the V2 definitely had some made improvements to those comet shapes here. What about V4? V4 is even better. It hasn't managed to make those stars perfectly round, uh, but it is really much closer to the ideal uh, star shape. So yeah, again, this is advantage to V4, especially in the star shapes. So we saw V4 can make a lot of difference in the nebulosity details on the Christmas tree nebula. It can make a lot of difference on the star shapes as well, uh, on lower quality data. Um, I want to see if there's been any change here. Not really, right? So here I feel like the, the source data signal to noise ratio is not sufficient for um, AIV2 or AIV4 to really eke out details, but V4 is definitely still performing better. Let's look at the last example, which is a recent image I took of M31. This is with my Tobtech IMX571 sensor camera. I'll put all of the links in the description if you're interested on the Andromeda Galaxy, and this is with my uh, Ascar V telescope with the 16 millimeters objective lens and the focal reducer. Uh, the Galaxy itself is um, really nice. I mean, this is from Tokyo. I really like seeing that. And the stars in the corner, they're, they might not be perfect, but they're close to perfect. The, uh, the Ascar-V is really a nice little, uh, little telescope for sure. Let's now look at AI-V2 versus AI-V4. Let's start with the details of the dust lanes here at the, at the front of the galaxy. Let's look at AI-V2 and AI-V4. And this is another area where I'm not so like, you know, I don't see such a huge difference between V2 and uh, V4. Um, so we yeah, have V2 on the left, V4 on the right, and maybe again, V4 has slightly more contrast. Uh, like in this little uh, arc here, uh, I feel it's like slightly more defined in V4 compared to V2, but we don't see such a huge difference there, I would say. So yeah, maybe no, no big difference in this area. Let's look at another area. There's like a little uh, star cluster here. Yeah, so I'm gonna look at this um, lower signal to noise ratio area here between V2 and uh, V4, and I think I see more of a difference here where uh, V4 again has slightly more contrast than V2, but it could again be psychological. Uh, let's look at the details of that little uh, star cluster here because this is where I start seeing a difference. Um, I feel like I can see more details in V4 compared to V2. There's clearly, clearly more contrast um, in V4 compared to V2, but you have to pixel peep to really see that. Still, it's, uh, it's really nice to see that. Let's look at maybe one of the uh, image corners to see what's happening there, just to see what happened in the corner in V2 compared to V4. And here, I actually really like to see what V4 is doing compared to V2. You can see that V2, the stars have been sharpened almost too much. They're now like almost blocks of pixels rather than proper stars. Whereas in V4, the star shapes as round shapes have been preserved. This is actually really nice to see that uh, V4 is performing better there. Uh, let me look again on a slightly different field of view. And again, V2, had over sharpened those stars. V4 preserves them as uh, stars. This is really, really good to see. So on those examples overall, uh, I am seeing like a pure advantage for V4. V4 might not have like mind blowing better results than V2 in many images as we saw, like we saw a really strong difference in the nebulosity details on the Christmas tree nebula 
example, but not so much on the others, but we saw far better star shapes in all of our images and that is a huge deal. So I'm super, super hyped to see that uh, Ross hasn't been sitting idle. He's made V4 and therefore Blur Exterminator even better than it was before. So now we can go ahead and reprocess or re reprocess all of our images again. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> Uh, but I'm so hyped. Obviously, there will be the debate as usual, like, okay, what has astrophotography gone to? Um, does buying more expensive equipment even make any sense anymore if we can fix all of those issues uh, in post? And in a way, I'm like, I'm, I'm fine with that. If we're leveling the playing field here, it's not a bad thing because astrophotography still needs dedication, still needs understanding of how things work. We'll still need auto-guiding in most cases. We'll still need uh, things like Nina or the ASI Air or the Stellar Mate Pro, which I will be reviewing on this channel very soon. And we still need a lot of work, a lot of frustration, a lot of single points of failure, a lot of weather dependency, a lot of uh, amazement at the results that we get, a lot of wonder at the, at the stars. Uh, it's still there. It's just we're getting better results than ever before. And I I'm personally am all for it. What are your thoughts? And uh, getting these better results, there's another way, by the way, it is to go down below and subscribe to the channel. You will get better results in your astrography if you do so. You can leave a comment as well for even better results. Uh, leave a like on the video for even better results. And if you want to get the best results ever uh, that you have achieved, you can join my channel as a Patreon or as a channel member. Links are in the description or as a channel member, you can click on that join button below the video. It makes the channel possible. It really helps out. Thank you so much, guys. And I hope you're enjoying your better quality image uh, because of that. And also clearer weather and less light pollution. It's all magic. But yeah, I'll be very interested to learn about your thoughts down in the comments. Let us know. With that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, whenever you can, to look up at the stars. And I'll see you next time.